Hello everyone and thank you for watching this video. Today we're going to talk about canonical correlation analysis. This is a dimensionality reduction technique uh, for multi-view data. We'll talk about exactly what it is and why we need it. And I will try to emphasize the similarity between CCA and principal component analysis, PCA. If you haven't already, I strongly recommend you watch um, two of my previous videos, one about uh, PCA and the other about singular value decomposition and eigen decomposition. They can both give you a very strong basis for this video. We'll talk about the mathematical aspects and the definitions that revolve around CCA, and then we'll see a short demonstration of Python code. So let's start with the what and why. First, we need to understand what multi-view data is. So multi-view data is when we sample some real world phenomenon from different views or modalities. Uh, let's try to understand this through several examples. Suppose we have a soccer game and there's a player and there's two different cameras that are focused on this player. So we have different sources, different views of the same well, player, which is the real world phenomenon. Another example could be if we have a data set that has both image and captions. So image is one view and the caption, the text is another view. Another example is for medical data. A patient can have several tests and each test represents a different uh, view of that patient. So it's the same phenomenon, which in this case it's patient or maybe a disease. And the reason we need this multi-view data is, well, suppose you're a doctor and you want to make some sort of decision regarding your patient. So naturally, it would be better to make a decision based on several tests. Of course, they have to be important tests, but you would rather make the decision on more data. And that is why we need this multi-view data. We would like to incorporate this information into machine learning models. There are several problems that uh, naturally arise from uh, multi-view data. One is that some of the views may be noisy. So if you have uh, noise in one view, this could be problematic for your model because it would need to handle this kind of data. And another is that some of the views may have different dimensions and the, the dimensions could also be like very large. And again, this alone also poses a problem for uh, the models because uh, large dimensions is a way for the models to overfit and different uh, dimensions could lead the models to be biased towards one of the uh, views. And CCA deals with both of these. Uh, it reduces dimensions. Uh, also, of course, depending on the data, it reduces the noise because one view could compensate for the other. And it, well, it reduces this to the same dimensions, so they would be at the same size. We'll see how to do that in the following slides and in the Python code. So canonical correlation analysis, let's try to understand this method in more detail, is again, the joint dimensionality reduction technique that reduces dimensions such that the projected data in the new space is now maximally correlated, which kind of makes sense because of the name canonical correlation analysis. Let's continue to talk about CCA and understand the mathematical concepts. So for two different views, let's denote them as X and Y, they have N corresponding samples and view X has dimension P and view Y has dimension Q. What we want to do is to learn two uh, different vectors in this case, A and B. A is of dimension P, of course, and B correspondingly is Q. And these vectors are used to project the data onto a lower dimensional space. And applying them, projecting them, is also referred to as a linear combination of X and Y. Mathematically, it's written as XA and YB. And again, trying to put this into words, we want uh, A and B to reduce dimension such that in the shared Space, uh, it would be maximally correlated. Let's 
try to deep dive even more into the mathematical notations. So for the two different views, uh, we want to get the maximum correlation. We want A and B such that we would have maximum correlation uh, between the linear combination of x, A, of x and y, of course. And we denote the correlation as the Greek letter rho. Now, there's a way to achieve this maximum correlation. Uh, first, we need to understand how the features of x and y behave one with another. And to do that, uh, we can calculate the cross-covariance uh, matrix Cxy. It's denoted as, you can see, Cxy like this. And, well, this is actually the formal equation for CCA. It's the usual way it's represented in different papers. And what we have over here at the upper part is, again, how the two features behave one with another. Projecting x with a, projecting y with b, we need this transpose to fit all dimensions. And at the end, at the end we, we get the cross-covariance between the two uh, data sets after we have projected uh, to a lower dimensional space. And we want to maximize this. Now, the lower part, we have this these two confusing parts, which are used to normalize the covariance to correlation because, well, we, we need to standard uh, the data. And another constraint that is usually imposed is that these are equal to one because we want the A and B to be the unit vectors. And actually, there's a way to solve this equation using the eigen decomposition method for both A and B, respectively. I'll skip a few lines of equations, but we get this at the end. Okay, we get the eigen decomposition again for A and B. Note that they have the same uh, eigenvalue. The only difference is, of course, except for A and B, is that the way the covariance and the cross covariance as matrices are represented. And again, referring back to my videos on PCA and eigen decomposition, this should make sense because, well, what we did in PCA is we find the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors for the covariance matrix of a single data set. And we wanted to maximize the variance in the lower dimensional space. And over here, we do the same thing. We want to maximize uh, the correlation, and that is why we use these uh, equation, these uh, the matrices. So it's an, a, just a representation of the data, again, that uh, because we use this icon decomposition method, gives us exactly what we want, the maximum uh, correlation. Another thing I would like to point out is that, well, we can get several different corresponding A and B vectors. So we can expand this notation to be AI and BI, of course, for all AI and BI. And similarly, the uh, eigenvalues would also be uh, denoted with i. And this is in the case we want to project it into more than one dimension. We did the same thing with PCA. Maybe we want two dimensions, three dimensions. It depends on the task that we want to achieve. And the way we sort the eigenvalues uh, is by the largest to the smallest, meaning if the eigenvalue that we get from this uh, decomposition uh, the larger it is, the more correlated the projections are in the lower dimensional space. So this is how we sort out the different uh, corresponding pairs of AI and BI. Now, let's continue to talk about uh, CCA through a short Python code example. Uh, if you found this video helpful in any way, please like and subscribe. It helps me very much and I really appreciate it. Okay. First, I'll upload this uh, notebook to my GitHub page. What we'll do here is again use CCA with sklearn, um, and we'll use a dataset called the California Housing Dataset. So let's start by importing the different li libraries and importing the specific dataset. By the way, sklearn has many toy datasets, and California Housing is one of them. <clears throat> And so now we see that we have a data set that has different uh, features. Um, and well, it's a, unimo it's, a, it's a single view, right? This poses a problem. We can create different views synthetically. I'll show this in the following uh, 
code. And this is the dimension of the data. So we have many samples, 20,000 samples, and nine different features. And let's do a short EDA just to kind of understand the data better. So um, DF describe uh, gives us different statistical features that we have on each one of the features. I guess it's not that inf informative for us. And let's also see the correlation between the different features. Okay. So see that many of the features are not correlated. What are correlated are the number of bedrooms and the number of room that makes sense. And also a strong correlation is between the longitude and the latitude, meaning the position of the house. That also makes a lot of sense. And well, again, we have a single view. So to create two single views, we could do that synthetically. All we, all we would do is like uh, use different features, say for one view and different features for another view. And we could say that, you know, theoretically what happened is that we have two different uh, uh, real estate uh, or, or statistical analysis uh, that uh, one sampled this and one sampled this. And now we want CCA to project the data together. And so we do this to create our different uh, data sets or the different views, sorry. <clears throat> and of course, like any other uh, method, we would like to uh, scale the data. In this case, we use the Z-score. By the way, we don't really need this because I think that in all of the sklearns uh, method, CCA, PCA, they scale the data automatically. So we don't really need to do that. But uh, regardless, we'll do that because it's good practice. Okay. And now we can uh, use CCA from sklearn. So we can't apply it on the entire data set because it's too large. Uh, I, mean, I mean, we can, but it would take forever. So we sample the first, uh, I guess, 500 uh, samples. We define an object, a CCA object, and the number of components is the number of new dimensions that we want uh, to get. And the fit transform gives us uh, the, 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 the represented data in the lower dimensional space. And then we can take these two and ask, what is the correlation between them? What is the correlation between the first uh, variables? And it should be very high. So naturally it's one because it's a small uh, subset. If it was like larger, then I guess it, it, it would be like, almost one you would see like 0 0.99 or something and well it should be maximally correlated and the correlation is very large so so what we do now is we plot the data in this uh, scatter plot and we can visually see the projected data from the first view and from the second view and how they behave on the same dimension again this is the only first canonical variable this is you can see it we index it by index zero over here and after we project the data this is the plot we get which again gives us a very uh, good correlation between uh the two data sets and well i guess that's it but of course this isn't the end of the process we use cca to get the new representation of the data and what naturally would happen after that is that we would use this data to a downstream task, like maybe clustering the data together to get better performance that we would have had if we only used uh, one of the uh, no uh, noisy views, for example. Another thing that I would like to highlight is that, well, we have the projected data now. Uh, it's like a view 1C and view 2C. And are projected to the same space but still we can use the projected data from the two different data set to create the new data uh well concatenated uh so even though it's the same representation of the same data what i usually do is i concatenate these two on axis one meaning by columns and that's how i get the fused data set uh together so in case you want to continue this to, again, a downstream task, uh, take that into consideration as well. And thank you. Thank you again for watching this video. If you found it helpful, please like and subscribe. It helps me very much, and I really appreciate it. Thank you again.